If you haven't checked out our podcast, you're truly missing out on all the backstory. What are you waiting on, baby? The lady that he went to trial over, can you give us any idea of the circumstances around her death? Something with the head. Come along a chilling journey into the eternal realm of Nashville, Tennessee. Home to country music and hot chicken. Ah. But amongst the honky tonks is a town full of terrifying ghosts. We'll take to the sinister underbelly of Nashville's dark history. Oh. We'll unearth the captivating stories woven within the infamous locals of Smoky Row and Hell's Half Acre. A place so evil, it once was overrun with notorious criminals, bootleggers, gamblers, and prostitutes. Damn! Oh! All right, man. What the It's true crime meets paranormal. This is why they hunt Nashville. Yeah, so this was a very prominent street because, you know, the Hermitage is up there. That's ah. the, the famed hotel. Kicked out of there before. Yeah, so we have the Hermitage, you know, again, okay. there's... So it's not far-fetched now that they've made this, I guess this will be an alley into a parking structure, an yeah. underground parking structure. Well, okay, you're going to love this. Are you okay. ready for the... You like? You remember me and coincidences and all yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, you're going to love this. Come on. This is the Wilcox building. I know what building that is. What building is that? That's where Birdie died. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I did not know what building that was. This one right here. Yeah, so that was the St. Cloud Hotel where Birdie had residence in. Oh, wow. And so that's the that's Birdie's alley. And this is? And this is the Wilcox. So this is the alley we're talking about. Oh, wow. It's called St. Cloud Alley. How crazy is it so much death occurred? Look at those woo girls. What? Well, <laughs> okay, we'll go, let's just take it a step further. Look at what's behind you. You have the state capitol. State capitol. We have the Hermitage Hotel. Right. The Wilcox Building. Whoa, okay. St. Cloud Hotel. All of that is in like a hand's distance away from each other. Yep. And that's a lot of death. Yeah. Attached to so many different locations, right. but on the same block. Right. Isn't that okay. crazy? Okay. We all, we almost need to do something right here. Yeah, this is, could be like a, a Bermuda Triangle. It, it's weird, right? A paranormal triangle. Yeah, because we I definitely could see Fife's being an H.H. Holmes type, right. and this was his H.H. Holmes building. It's interesting that so many occurrences happen so close to each other right and there's so many different types of stories but it's the same block yeah that's what's creepy yeah this is like a murder block yeah it's kind of what i've been saying a death block yeah i don't know if you've been paying attention this entire season none of it but i've been saying that this entire season like this whole area is super super haunted <coughs> you took your breath away? Well, I think Dr. Feist might need a... I might need an appointment with Dr. Feist. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> yeah. okay, so you know you'll be giving him... No, I'm something. a man. It's not... Jeez, I'm man. fine. Did you see what he looked like? He was handsome. I know, man. He <laughs> might have your little social security check. <laughs> he was handsome. But look, we come here out of respect, love, and peace to speak to Martha Swan. Because we know she had some dealings with Mr. Feist as well. And we're just here to come in positive spirits, come in love, peace, and harmony. We're here to get down to the bottom of a very, very interesting story. It's it's a hundred and some years later. I mean, you passed away in 1898. 1898. Yeah. It is 2023. Yeah. Can you believe that? Oh, my God. We have flying cars and everything. All of that. Cars drive by yeah. themselves. I was just driving something that flew with my 
two hands just now. It's amazing the things, how times change. But with the new times comes new investigations. And we've heard a lot of rumors about this man named Dr. Feist. And we want to know if they're true. So we're coming to those that may have been affected by him in some kind of way to hear their story. So feel free to talk to us through this box. It will not hurt you. It just allows us to hear you. I know if I was on the other side, somebody got me like that, man. I'd be willing to tell everybody. Mountaintop. Yeah. Gosh, it's still not creep. Said that creep. You do Martha, can you tell me the name of the person that you don't like? Can you say his last name for us? Martha, when you died, were you really sick? Do you feel like Dr. Feist had something to do with you passing? Do you feel like he cared for you? Well, flirt. I think there was flirt. Money, money, or bunny? Did you leave money to Dr. Feist? Stop. Stop. Stop this. Wow. That almost feels like she's taken up for him. Like, stop. Well, see, Martha, there's a possibility because she was sick, but she doesn't know what happened. She was just kind of, and if she was always on morphine, She'd have been in and out of consciousness. And that. in her eyes, the doctor was doing what doctors do. Would do. Out for right. Her. She did hire him to take care of her. Yeah. So he was probably, and he's nice, he's charming, he's yeah. good looking. Yeah. And then, oh, by the way, he's dating your daughter. Yeah. And he wants to marry her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. And then she doesn't know what he did. Do you think even in the afterlife she doesn't know? So she still feels positive towards him? See, the afterlife is your expertise. Okay. You're I'm still trying to figure that I'm out. I'm the theorist and detective. Let's dig up. I know she told us to stop, and we're going to respect that. But let's go talk to Sadie. Okay. And see what she said, has to say. If she might be trying to cover for him as well? Well, no, because Sadie was mad at him when she died. We know that. Yeah. We don't know if he had something to do with her death or if she really did do what they say she did. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we know she was mad at him, right? Because she caught him with the with the other woman, or yeah. the I'm sorry, the other patient, right? You know, because she was it was double booked patients that day, right? So, so she caught him. So we know she's mad. So she might have a little more to say than Martha. Right. Martha, I don't think knew. So that's interesting. Let's get to her, man. Sadie Goldstein's resting space. What a beautiful name. Sadie Louise Goldstein. Yeah. She sounds like she was just like, I don't know, that, that name sounds like you could have been president or just, a movie star. Just turned 24, 24 years old. And I mean, she had movie star looks too. I mean, she, I, I, I'm not gonna lie. Can I, can I be truthful here? This is a tr safe truth space. Definitely. I have a crush on her. She's beautiful. I have a crush on you. I think you're beautiful. She's beautiful. She was, did you, you saw the photo? She's beautiful. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, what? The, she, just because she's like the first girl that I've ever seen from 1903 that I was mildly attracted to. That's nice. That's nice. Sadie, I wouldn't, whatever this man Feist did to you, because we know he did something to make you either do what we think you did or or he did something even worse than what you did to yourself. Mm -hmm. Either way, I would never have done you like that. You would never, because you're a good guy. Well, yes, I would never do that to anyone. Right. Uh, but especially to a young woman. I would have I would have made an honest woman out of her. So you don't feel like Sadie was honest before? Oh, 
Well, no, I, no, she was See, because we know. Got to work on your macking, Mark. Yeah. Got to work on your macking. Well, she okay. So she, we know she was honest because she basically gave him literally everything. She was getting loans from her brother-in-law to support her lover. I, you know what? I hate. I don't judge anybody for the decisions that she make, and I understand that no, people she did can it for love. Yeah, people can be manipulated, and yeah. I and I hate that. I've heard a lot of stories in the past. You know, they did that whole documentary on Netflix about that guy that was uh, swindling money from all the women. Yeah, and then he nothing happened to him. That's right. the worst part. That's what sucks, Sadie. Sadie. That men like that get away with treating women like you yeah. that way. They use you for your money, for your looks, for what you have to offer, but then they have no intentions of being with you or loving you, and they're just off to the next one. And none of those women had money, just like... Like Sadie like did. Like Sadie. Like, why are you taking money from women who don't have money? Because he felt like it was easy. He was good looking. Mm. He portrayed himself to be wealthier and yeah. more astute than he actually right. was. He was a hustler and a right. con man. He was paying. He was paying for the dates with the money from the other women. That's like a Ponzi scheme. Yeah, and that's what I think Dr. Feist was doing to these women because, as we know, Sadie witnessed him with another woman. Right. The night she died. Right. So that does set you up for a um, an unalivement of yourself. An alivement, yes. Because you could be full of grief, you could be distraught, you could act off emotions yeah. and react. Right. But it also could set up a, a place for someone to get you up out of here. Yeah. So they can move on to their next victim. To their next victim. Yeah, because it's not like she was making, you know, buco dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Like whatever he was getting from her yeah. was probably replaced by who he was with right. currently. Yeah, I'd love to know who that was. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, Sadie, we would love to hear what happened from your own perspective. Know that we're not here to judge, but we're here to get your story out, get your truth out, and that's all that matters. If, if by some circumstance you feel like you had to do to yourself what they say you did, we get it. No, hey, listen, we just want to tell your truth. But if someone hurt you or harmed you, we want that story and that truth to be told as well. So feel free to talk to this to us through this box. We come in love, peace, and respect. Let's see, Satan. Is Satan here? I said it's me. Do you mind telling us what happened to you? So what'd you do to me? Were you in love with Dr. Feist? Yes. I said, of course, yeah. Of course, yeah. Sadie, did you harm yourself? Sadie, can you tell us how you harmed yourself? What kind of feeling did you have? Do you forgive Dr. Vice for lying to you? He said no. That sounded like murder. Did you hear murder? Hitting. 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 Yeah. Terrified. Terrified. Sadie, can you tell us what happened the night you passed away? A lot of talking. Yes. Not a lot of not anything just coming coherent through. coming right now. And we want to just make it overly clear that the victims of this story is not necessarily who this story is about. So it's not us trying to pry into Sadie's situation. You know, it was untimely. We hate that it happened, and we asked a few questions that we got. But it's not our. We're not in the position to force Sadie's hand to discuss what happened to her. Like, we ask the questions, and if we don't get the response, that's just, it wasn't meant to be. But when we get to, to Doc, oh, 
It's no old bar. We're he getting a confession. Got, he got some. He got some questions to answer, Doc. Permission to be angry at him. Because we don't judge. We just try to. Get, we're cops. We're right. investigators. So we have to good cop, bad cop. Him. Right, but permission to be bad cop. <laughs> angry cop. <laughs> yeah. Permission to be uh, <laughs> coffee. Disgruntled cop. Yeah. I might have to come in, you know, detective looking like Yeah. Short sleeves, striped button down. What a tie. Short tie over my belly. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. like it. Yeah. Sadie, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get this man to confess. Sadie, we gonna get the truth behind. We're doing it really for you, my on. love. Sadie. And I hope you found your McDreamy in on the, the other cabin. side. Yeah. She for sure did. Yeah. You somebody, think, your 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 true love was there. Yeah, you were meant for somebody good. You know. Well. Hey man. All right, Shady. <sighs> we'll see you soon. All right, Mark man. First and foremost, where do you have me and my dogs going? <laughs> I'm so glad they came along. <laughs> They're gonna need to protect us off of Feist. So he's buried off this lonely road? Yeah. I mean, it's what we call BFE. What does that mean? Um, Egypt. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's hot here in Alabama. This is that good old southern heat, man. Yeah, yeah, this is the one where your sweat sweats. Yeah, right? Yeah, my sweat is sweating. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, like I've had, I've had Texas heat. Yeah. Oof. And I've had Georgia heat. Georgia heat. But hot. those are like the buns. Oh, yeah. Alabama's that meat. This is the hot dog. It's that hot dog. Yeah, this is. It's hot dog. Which <laughs> is a sandwich. Man, listen, it is. Hot dogs are sandwiches. Yeah. But no, but look, man, we're here at Jacob. Herman Feist, MD. We've made it to this we've, guy. We've traveled a, a long way. Yeah, but he's a, he's a special case. We needed to get out of Nashville and come see this guy. But you know what else we need? Yeah, we need somebody else to we, help us. We need to bring in the big guns. The big guns. Yeah. Because questioning is one thing. Right. I feel like people can lie. They lie all the time. Right. I feel like we need someone that can maybe sense, maybe someone who can feel, someone that knows things that most don't. Right. And there's only one person I feel like can handle that job. One person. Yeah. The person. Bring him in. Chip Coffee. My man. My dear friend. My brother. Hey, guys. How are you? Thank you for those kind words, Dale and Spratt. No, of course, Chip, man. You know, you're a brother, a mentor, everything to me. So I appreciate you, man. He's Seriously. an original ghost brother from another mother. No. Oh, man, listen. Chip paved the way for a lot of people, man. And literally one person, and I can say, honestly, the first person to welcome me into the whole paranormal community. So Chip, man, I know you don't like to know much about these stories, but just to give you just, you know, just to give you a ballpark arena of what we're doing. So we try to tie in true crime and paranormal. Our job is to find out the truth behind a lot of different cases from the past. Like, all these people attached to all the cases that we go and search for have all passed away. And a lot of these stories have been lost, and the truths have not been uncovered. And that's kind of what brings us here to Alabama today to talk to good old, uh, well, I don't know if it's good, but Jacob Herman Feist, MD. We have some questions about his past. Yeah, just a little background. I mean, I, I don't think this is, you know, giving away too much, but... You know, this is a man who was a doctor in Nashville, and um, he definitely, uh, we, we are here because we're trying to figure out if the things that they said he did, he did, or he did not do. Chip, you have like all the emotions there. Like I've seen you literally look at someone and, and I, I don't even know what it is that you see but you see something. So I don't, I don't know how this works remotely, but you've never seen a picture of Jacob. Can you tell me what type of person he was? Like what type of, what type of man was he? Um, you want me to sum it up for you in just one sentence? 
<laughs> so, let me tell. You, let me tell you this. I've been around you enough <laughs> that anytime you say something like that, it's already hit you. Yeah. It's already hit you. <laughs> I, I would love that. I hear in my head. Speaking of Jacob Feist, you caused a lot of people a lot of pain. I think he had some mental health issues too, and that contributed to what he was doing. I, I don't want to diagnose him, but it, it could have been something even like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type thing. Hmm. Wow. Mm. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I've never put that connection together. Yeah, no, it, it's funny that you say that because that makes complete sense. So he's got the God complex. Mixed in with some sort of like bipolar yeah. situation, which is... Well, he turns on to something... Dude. But to be a master manipulator that way, yeah, and taking lives, you have to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, if you don't, if you are supposed to be saving lives, but you're taking lives and you have no regard for life, right? I mean, yeah, we are, we already know the m multiple people that we deal with are psychopaths like this, but man, this is this is a whole new level of wrong when you're a doctor, you know, yeah. and you're literally, you know trying to treat somebody to save their life, but you're taking their life for the benefit of yourself. And it's all trust lost. Like yeah. they come to you at their weakest point in life. Right. To look for help and you take Oh yeah, there's nothing you can do. And you're supposed to trust your doctor, right? What are you supposed to say? Yeah, it's, that's horrible. Do you have any idea, a number of uh, who he might've been responsible for or how many victims might he have had if he had any i got the number 16. wow one six wow <laughs> and we only had three we had but that's the three that yeah you could you could account for but right. that's but that was the whole conversation we had right at the other grave site yeah was like how many people did, yeah because the his mo would be kill 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 move <laughs> right you know what i mean yeah <laughs> So it's like, how many places did he move from where yeah. he was indirectly or directly responsible for? Well, or, and this might not even be murders. It could be just scamming w women right. and taking over. So it could very well, that, he lived, oh my God, I didn't even think about it. Like he lived 79 years. Yeah, <laughs> so one of the, one of the victims uh, was a young lady uh, named Sadie Goldstein. Do you have any idea of how she might have passed? I feel very sick in my entire chest and, and abdomen. So this could have been something that was ingested maybe. She ingested pills. Wow. Yeah. No, that's right. That's, that's spot on because she ingested pills, but I think she was doing it in, in a, as a cry for help. Oh, wow. To kind of get. But not to go all the way. Yeah. Through. She accidentally unalived herself. Right. And I think she wanted the doctor to save her. Well, then there was the, the, the lady that he went to trial over. Um, can you give us any idea of the circumstances around her death? Something with the head. Remember what I said about the circumstances around her death. Right, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Scout. Scout. She's scout chip. Oh, Lord. I know you said head, <laughs> but yeah. I know you weren't thinking scout. No. <laughs> like, you were that spot on. Well, and, and, and that's kind of one of the reasons why they pointed to him, because he would have known the surgical tools. To scalp someone and remove their Yeah, but and why, why would, would you well, do I that? Well, I think it's because of her hair. Listen, man, you opened up way more questions than we initially had yeah. and, and brought in a couple of more perspectives that we didn't even think about. Well, and, and what can we expect? I mean, what's, what's our approach? Should we ask him? Is there a question we should ask him? What do you think? Absolutely. Here's the thing that I would Here's the thing that I would tell you, the two of you. Which Jacob are you going to get? Are you going to get Dr. Jekyll Jacob or are you going to get Mr. Hyde Jacob? So you may get somebody that is nasty or, or going to be, who the hell are you to be asking me these questions? Who are you? I don't even know. That may be something you get, hopefully. But it could come through that he's going to, He's gonna he's gonna be very defensive almost and go on the offense as well. Right. No. Nah. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Wow. Chip, man, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You both are very welcome. Please let me know what you find out. 
Okay. No, 100%. 100%. We'll let you know for sure. Chip, man. Thanks again, man. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I right. Mean, he's Like I said, we're going to have to go in a little, like, like we're detective. We're going to have to, like, soften him a little bit. Yeah. But if he plays that Mr. Hyde crap with me... I'm, I'm not going to take it. I'm not messing with... Mark, you don't look too tough now, man. <laughs> no, seriously? You're playing the Mr. Hyde crap, aren't you? <laughs> this Feist guy, he's not playing nice. Feist ain't nice? Feist ain't gonna play nice? All right, let's do it. Y'all. Mark, I swear, as my name is Dalen Spratt, I literally just saw a man. Yeah, oh, I mean, this is an open cemetery, Dalen. Nah, right here, though. What do you mean, right here? Right here. You see this tombstone right here in front of us? Yeah. Literally, I looked down just now because an ant was on my foot. Yeah. And, Mark, I, I'm, and I'm not even, this is not even plain. This is real life, I'm telling you. Bullshit you not, Mark. Look at you in your face. As I looked up, the, it was a fully, he had long sleeves, khaki pants, and his shirt was tucked in. Khaki pants? Khaki pants, long, and the long sleeve shirt. Huh. Literally, I, li like, there's as close as this tombstone was, because yeah, well, I jumped. If you go back and look at the and tape. There's, there's a bush. Yeah, in front of you. Yeah, so th there's. But I listen, see. if you go back and look at the tape, yeah. when I look up, I kind of. Cause I'm like, damn, how did a man get? But then there's nobody there. Yeah, well, and these are fenced in too, so. No, nah, that was wild. crazy. No. Nah. I, I'm, I am blocked from. A, you can't even see what I just saw. No, nah, no. It no literally way. was, all, I saw a whole person literally walk out. Cause it would freak me out. Oh, well, you know, I felt like, how did somebody get that close to us that fast? You know what camera could have got it was this camera. The GoPro? Yeah. We'll have to go back and look. Sheesh. Okay. All right, man. This this cemetery is active. Nah, it's definitely active. It looks active. It's been, I mean, we have people that have been here since, you know, obviously 1952, but like his parents are here and they died in the 1800s. Yeah, but do you think they want to know well, the truth about their son? Okay. Oh. It's a lot going well, on. Let's get to the spirit box session, man. Yeah. You should be here for backup, man, if I need I'm you. I'm here for backup. Um, look, I've watched First 48. During first 48, there's always the guy that just kind of stares. You be that guy. And I'm just going to be that guy. You just be that Cause guy. Because apparently, he already knows who I am. He already put something on you. Oh. All right. So, Dalen and Mark here. We are in Alabama at the gravesite of Jacob Herman Feist, MD. Jacob, I'm going to be honest with you, man. We've heard a lot of interesting things about you. I'm not coming here judging. I can't speak for Mark, but I... I'm not judging. I am just want to know your side of the story. People have claimed that you've done some pretty bad things to some people. Like you're, it's, it's over now. Wherever you are now, I'm sure you're dealing with the, the ramifications of whatever you did. So we would just love a, a, a honest conversation, man. Nothing can happen to you. I know you're in the presence of your mother and father, but shoot, man, they know they baby. <laughs> Every mother know they baby. So let's get to it. I didn't say a word. You didn't. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Family. It's hard to do. Jacob, are you here? Dr. Feist. He's helpless. Why is Dr. Feist helpless? It was many. Let's get through this now. Okay, Dr. Feist, are you going to answer some questions for us? I'll try. Okay. You know why we're here. Dr. Feist, are you responsible for the death of any of your patients? You said one. Yeah. 
hang up. He said mental health. Can you tell us the name of the persons who life you took? Yes. Doorway. Doorway. What made you want to hurt people? Money. You heard money? How many women did you take advantage of? Do you have any remorse or regret? No. Did you reach any judgment on the other side? Our door. Our door. It's interesting that he keeps saying door yeah. and doorway. So Sadie Goldstein was in the doorway when she passed. Where, you found, they found yeah, her. where they found her. She was laying in the doorway. Okay. So if he's talking about... A, Who's the one that he killed? Yeah, and also it's, it's important to know that I don't know if all his victims were necessarily... Female. Well, no, well, that's very true. And also, I'm, I'm beginning to think. Now, Sadie and Rosa were love interest, lovers of his. Of his. And he was also seen gallivanting around with another woman, the Sadie, and there was some distance between Sadie and Rosa. Yeah. So it could have been this woman. It could have been another woman. How many people that he was just, that he was dating or having relations with were his victims could be potential victims yeah and remember victim does not necessarily mean hurt or harm right physically right it could be financially yeah it could be emotionally right well and and we know that he he wrecked families for sure emotionally. those are documented in the newspaper yeah. it was like oj it was yeah. like this man murdered this woman yeah yes let me, so I got let's a get into rosa I think we know who. Martha and Sadie, we know. Martha. Mary Ellen. And that's it, Mary Ellen. What's that? Mary Ellen, are you here to help us? What is Shut up. Says, shut up. Mr. High. You feist. Did. 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 Martha. Is, he, is Mary Ellen trying to get Feist to talk and he told him to shut up? Or is he telling us to shut up? We know. So, yes, we know. Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen only shows up anytime shit gets like rocky. So, so Mary Ellen's here to protect us. 100%. So, then. Mary Ellen, is Dr. Feist a bad person? You bet. Dr. Feist, will you answer our questions? No. Everything. Too much going on. Can you tell me about your relationship with Rosa? Music. I like music. Skin. Skin. How did you hurt Rosa? Head. The cap. It said the cap. It like said decapitated. No, it didn't. It sounded like it said decapitated. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I heard it. Had. And then it said decapitated. <laughs> to die. <laughs> so, Did. Dr. Feist, are you admitting to no. killing Rosa? No way. No, no. way. <laughs> no way you're not admitting it? Come back to me. No. No. But Dr. Feist, did you kill Rosa? Rosa. I can see it. Mary Ellen, is Dr. Feist lying to us? It's history. 
Find her. Is Rosa on the other side? What happened to Rosa? We don't hurt. Forget. Money. Remove it. Remove it. I can't say remove it. Her jewelry. Remove her jewelry. Or her scalp. That's disgusting. I, so, I'm curious. I always had a wondered theory about the scalp. Did he okay. do that to make it look like somebody else did it? Because right. that wasn't. But like, why would decapitated come off? Come out at a, come out the box. I've never heard decapitated come out the box. I, I did not hear that, but scalping and decapitating are close. Very close. Yeah, the evidence was circumstantial to begin with, which is why he probably ended up getting acquitted because there was no smoking gun or right. scalping mechanism right. to get him. That's why I think we need to know for f his thoughts on it, but he's still fighting us. Mm -hmm. He's saying no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then he, but then he, he, but he, but he knew things about what happened. Yeah, so but then he's like, I'm not going to admit to do it. Do you think Mary Ellen's kind of trying to get it out of him? I think Mary Ellen's here to protect us. Protect us. Okay. I don't yeah. think her job is well, to like. She's like, I didn't get hired as a deputy. Yeah, my ch <laughs> my ch my chair is not falling yet. So. You're good. Yeah. You're good. Maybe you sweating. You sweating it on out, man. My sweat is sweating. I see. I see. And I do want to do an SLS cam reading before we leave. Just around I think here. we should. Yeah. I just because something is messing with my chair. You saw something. I forgot all about that, Mark. What? Just talking to him, I forgot about the whole person I just saw. And that was he a khaki guy, khaki pants guy? I don't know. I don't think it was him. I don't get Doctor Feist. Yeah. I get someone here. Yeah. Wondering what we're doing well, talking this, to him. This is. A, 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 this is a family plot for generations, so there's some khaki pants people here, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. They were big in the 90s. The people that are resting here, how do you feel about Dr. Feist being here? It's terrifying. It's terrifying. As an ant just run all over my feet. <laughs> you, you heard that. They, that was a clear as day response. How do you feel about Dr. Feist being here? It's terrifying. Why is it terrifying? Are you afraid of what he could do or what he's capable of? Destroy. Y'all, I know my shoes are off, but y'all can't judge me. I'm just getting bit. <laughs> Oh. That's wild. That terrifying. He, but see, that's the thing. It's like, was he, if he had two personalities. Could one of them just be overly. Yeah, just aggressive. Just somebody that could snap at any moment. Oh my God. What's going on? It's like the box is trying to cut like. Yeah, it's like getting. My stomach has never cut the box on before. Oh, I don't know if it's your stomach. I'm, uh, there's something eerie now there's been there's been multiple things going on yeah man the whole vibe it just, just kind of changed dark. right it's actually cold now it's yeah. not cold i mean i'm not gonna say it's cold it's cooler it's a, but we're still sweating though i'm not i'm actually uh, cool now i'm sweating you still good. but i'm still that was me that was me that was it. that me i think you had something to do with it at the beginning but that was me that was definitely me yep i do not weigh 300 pounds no, but did you just feel the air change just a little bit literally and then it the got whole, darker? The whole vibe changed, man. The whole There's vibe just literally just changed. Yeah. We're, we're getting vibes that he's t terrifying. We've got That was clear as day. Yeah. We're, so we're getting vibes. We're getting attacked by bugs. I'm just getting totally wrong. Yeah. Again, I didn't even... Our electrical equipment. So you have the SLS? It's why do you keep cutting this box on? What you, is there something you're ready to confess? What? What? He told? 
What do you want to tell us? It's because of her? What happened? Wanted. Wanted? I told her. I told her. Seen her die? You. But did you kill her? Did you kill Rosa Mangrum? Did you think you were better than everyone else? Oh, we know. It's like people are talking about him. He's saying kill. I, I think people do know about him. I mean, if you could, you know, again, the trial was in 1907, yeah. 1908. Yeah. If he moved back here then, he lived here almost 50 years, 45 Somebody years. Somebody said something about it. Some, everybody knew, must have known about it. See. I mean, he clearly couldn't get his license. What? Did y'all know the story of Dr. Feist? Right. Dr. Feist, were there other victims? Is there anyone that you feel sorry about? No. I just... All right, man. I gotta get up, bro. I'm getting the fuck bit like a motherfucker. Oh, shit. I think we should do a sweep with your SLS, yeah. Yeah. So look, man. They make SLSs so much more smooth these days. This is the ghost tube SLS. But I like to just do a... a okay. Now... That's either a tomb, a headstone, or it's a, a person. Wow. But there's literally an arm, a leg. Can you raise your hand for me, please? It might just, uh oh, no, it, that Wait, raised its moving. arm. that's moving, yeah. That raised its arm. Wow. So I wonder if anyone else, Let's see if Mr. Feist is here. Mr. Feist, can you show yourself? No, it's almost like he doesn't even want to show up. Well, you said you saw something. Over this way. Yeah. I saw something right over by this tree, walk from around this tree. Well, maybe he walked, maybe it's the person who walked over to where we Right. Just Who is he? Who is this person that's watching us? But that's the only, that's the only time someone pops up and a anomaly pops up just on that stone. We just did a full sweep. That's the only stone so, that so when an anomaly clearly, pops up. Look. So who who is it? Are you? Do, can, yeah, I'm gonna cut watching? It off. Is this the person that's causing our trouble? Who is this? This is William. McConnell and Amelia McConnell. Hmm. Whoever it is, they're showing up. Or does it, but let me ask you something. Does it have to be them? It doesn't, but they're resting on top of their stone. Interesting. So I just, you know, why would they be just right there and nowhere else? What year did they pass? Did you see? Um. And why are they here? 27 and 29. William and Amelia McConnell. William McConnell. So Billy, Bill McConnell. In 1927 or 29. Yep. And then this is Feist, his parents, and his sister. Okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. Hey, I'm not mad at the results that we got. I'm not mad at the, the, the information that Chip gave us. That was spot on. Uh, Feist coming through, 
knowing a lot of the details about what happened was interesting. But I'm telling you more so that the people around Vice in this resting area say he's terrifying. So that lets me know whatever energy he had when he was alive is still carrying over now. Right. So he didn't want to admit to what he did, but that still doesn't take away that people still know what happened. Absolutely. Wow. I think wow. We, I think he definitely was a bad dude. Yeah. Yeah. And God he, complex, as Chip know, says. Yeah, God complex. And that's, to me, those sociopaths are the worst of the worst, and they yeah. are known to be killers. Yeah. I don't know, though, for a fact that he killed Rosa Mangrum. Right. But I know that he did some evil things in his life. Yeah, but like we all know, whatever he did, he's definitely being judged for it in the afterlife. That we know for sure. Wow. Great work, Mark. Man, that's a wrap on season one. Great work. Nice job. Boom.